Hello everyone, I'm Samuel and uh, today I would like to make a very quick tutorial on how to use a small script that I've uh, created to plot the resistivity of metals um, within the Zeeman uh, formula. So let's just go ahead. Um, so you can go onto the XW website and from there you go to documentation, tutorial and then you can go to the uh, LED tutorial. So the LED tutorial is mainly about the effect of uh, spin orbit coupling, which is one of the new uh, feature of EPW. So you can see uh, in, in red that the effect of spin orbit coupling on the electronic band structure of LED. Um, moving on, you can see the phonon band structure and you can see that really the uh, spin orbit coupling is really important to, um, let's say, shift down the theoretical phonon frequency in red uh, onto the um, experimental dots. So in black it's without spin orbit coupling, in red it's with spin orbit coupling. So you can see that it's quite important to include spin orbit coupling in uh, a LED. So this is simply a metallic LED. Um, then you have here a graph that shows the effect um, of sampling. So this is the um, Eliasberg spectral function and this spectral function you can see that it converges rather slowly with k and q points um, so the message here is that uh, random k and q point integration in blue does converge faster uh, than homogeneous uh, grid and this is because homogeneous grids uh, oversample uh, the high symmetry some high symmetry point and so you you, you basically do calculation um, um, well too, uh, too many times because you're recomputing um, at different high symmetry points um, that are that are linked with symmetry. Uh, I hope that that was more or less clear. Um, so Sobol is a quasi-random uh, generator and I've used Sobol for the k-point grid and ra fully random for the q-point grid. Um, then here is the effect of spin orbit coupling. Again, you can see that uh, including spin orbit coupling is quite important, although the agreement with experiment is not fantastic. So I would say it's a bit closer, but it's not uh, really on top of it. Um, so the lambda is the area under the curve. So it's the integrated uh, alpha square f. And you can see that it does converge to 1.6, something like that. I think the experimental value is more or less 1.4, so a bit in between those two values. Uh, and finally, you have the difference between the alpha square f and the alpha square f transport. So let me show you the, the difference between the two. So, the, so this is the uh, EPW paper, and so the um, alpha square f is this uh, formula, so it's the integral of uh, the phonons times this lambda. And this lambda is the um, electron phonon coupling strength. You can see that it's directly connected with the electron phonon matrix element. Um, and, and that's it. So th this is the alpha square f, which is uh, energy dependent, omega. And the alpha square f transport is exactly the same, except that you have a velocity term. So you can see this is the alpha square f transport. Uh, you also have this uh, coupling strength, but this is a transport coupling strength. And this includes this one minus the velocity. So V is the electronic velocity, is the derivative of the Kohn-Sham, in this case Kohn-Sham, uh, eigenenergies along some uh, k-point uh, directions. Um, yes, so, so this will be the alpha square f. And you can see that the effect of the alpha square f with respect to the normal um, Eliasberg spectral function is not very strong. This means that um, you don't have strong backscattering. So, so the, the those velocity terms are supposed to account for scattering of uh, electron and states uh, into different uh, directions, so, so changing the, the, the k and q uh, momenta. Um, and now, once you have the alpha square f transport, you can compute um, the resistivity, the electrical resistivity of metals. And for that, you can use the um, Zeeman formula, which is an approximation. So it's it's uh, an average. Uh, it's a K and Q uh, average. Um, so it's one of the most well-known uh, approximation you can do. So this is uh, simply temperature dependent. So it's the integral over the frequency of this function alpha square f. 
So the EPW code will give you this function as a function of omega, and then you just need to integrate this function with omega, and n is the Boson chain uh, distribution function. And then you have this uh, prefactor where you have the, the temperature. Um, and so what I want to show is um, basically how to, from the knowledge uh, of this alpha square f, how can you uh, compute this? Um, so you can do it yourself using MATLAB or any uh, post-processing software, but here I'm providing a small Python script if you if you're interested in. So you can save this to file, which I've already done, but let's do it again. Okay, replace. And then uh, you can simply uh, untie it. Let's go ahead and do that. Yep. Then you go inside and you can see that there are three files. So the first one is this resistivity.py, it's a Python script that will plot uh, the figure. And then those two files are the alpha square f that you get from uh, EPW. I just need to mention one thing, is the fact that at the end of the file I have commented, so this is the beginning, the first line is the frequency and then all the other lines are the alpha square f for different phonon uh, smearing. Uh, I just need to, to mention that I have, so you should uh, comment all of those lines because my script uh, neglects the commented line and otherwise it will uh, think that those are numbers and it will break. So you just need to comment all of those lines. You can do the same for the other uh, files and then you can just launch um, this resistivity script like this and this will give you a figure that is similar to this one. Um, where in blue you have the resistivity without spin orbit coupling and you can see that just by um, having the alpha square transport with the spin orbit coupling we really have a curve that is very close to the experimental values. Um, so the Zeeman formula, although, although looking quite trivial, it's actually uh, quite powerful and works very well for, for metals, um, let's say simple metals. Uh, so you can see that we are uh, on top of the experimental curve and then we deviate a bit at high temperature. So that might be due to uh, other, uh, let's say, defect or other mechanism that could um, exist at uh, such temperature. Um, I just want to finish by um, maybe opening this uh, Python script and to quickly sh uh, show you what you might need to modify. So you need to obviously modify the name of the um, alpha square file that you have from EPW. So you need to modify this as well as so it should be in two places um, as well as where is it? Because there are two files ah, yeah, there. So there and there, you need to modify those two files. You might want to modify the range. Um, yes. So if you do that, you will then be able to plot uh, with the materials that you want to investigate something similar. So this uh, small Python script is used to help you plot it, but obviously you can do it yourself. Um, and probably this at some point will be also, the resistivity will be included uh, inside the uh, EPW, but for now, uh, since it's not provided, uh, I'm just uh, making this small video to explain how to use this script. Um, that's it. Bye-bye.